the Balrog Slayers. What it was could not be seen. It was like a great shadow, in the middle of which was a dark form, of man-shape, maybe, yet greater, and a power and terror seemed to be in it and to go before it. The Fellowship of the Ring, Book 2, Chapter 5, The Bridge of Khazad-dûm Early in the history of Arda, Morgoth made many efforts to instill darkness into the foundations of the world. The Balrogs are Maya that were corrupted by Morgoth's influence, serving him throughout the wars in Beleriand. Along with fire drakes and dragons, they were a significant military asset. With Gothmog, lord of the Balrogs, slaying even Feanor and Fingon, two of the great high kings of the Noldor, they were sent to war in place of Morgoth, who remained largely at Angband. But despite their terrible malice, there are few who have succeeded in fighting and killing them. Today, we will discuss the details of these figures and their battles with the protagonists of Middle-earth. Balrog roughly translates to Demon of Might in Sindarin, and they are also referred to as the Valuraukar, Quenyan for Demons of Power. They are massive, man-like figures wreathed in shadow and flame, often using whips and swords of fire to bring about destruction. Their exact numbers are not concretely described by Tolkien, starting out in the thousands, but eventually landing in the single or low double-digit range. It is typically accepted that there may only be about seven of them in total, and regardless of their numbers, they are responsible for the deaths of several major heroes in Middle-earth. There are three major instances where Balrogs were slain by heroic figures. Who could have stood up to such terrible beings? Let's find out. In the year 510 of the First Age, Morgoth sent his might to Gondolin as a force of orcs, goblins and Balrogs riding the backs of dragons, having now discovered their location thanks to the betrayal by Meglin, a resentful figure of the city. Thus began the fall of Gondolin, where many great elves fell, including Turgon, Ecthelion, and Glorfindel. The latter two would not die without taking Balrogs with them, however, and the tales of their battle stand up to any in the Legendarium as the most valiant. Ecthelion was an elf lord of Gondolin. He was a warden of the Great Gate and lord of the House of the Fountain, responsible for the King's Square of the city, which possessed a large fountain in the centre. The details of his origin are not clear, but he is believed to have been born sometime in the Years of the Trees. Dawned in glistening silver armor and a diamond-topped helm, Ecthelion was a musical legend. His voice was renowned by elves and feared by the enemy. His skill on the flute was unrivaled, and his army would march into battle playing them. The name Ecthelion would become a war cry for the Eldar. During the fall of Gondolin, Ecthelion and his forces would descend upon the gate to their great music, slaying more goblins than any other force of the Eldar had in any battle ever combined. But the fire drakes, or wingless dragons, would burst through the walls, sporting balrogs upon them and spraying fire. According to some versions, Ecthelion slew three of them with his blade, but suffered an injury to his shield arm from the whips of the balrogs. He fought alongside Tuor, son of Huor, who had lifted him away from the dragon's fury and back to the fountain in the king's square. There they were confronted by Gothmog, lord of the Balrogs and high captain of Angband, who further injured Ecthelion by damaging his sword arm, leaving him with little hope of defense or attack. Thus, as Gothmog raised his whip again, Ecthelion strove forth headfirst toward him with his spiked helm at the breast of the beast. Gothmog met his end at that moment, but as he was intertwined with Ecthelion, they both fell into the fountain. Clad in armor, Ecthelion drowned in the very fountain that gave name to his house, yet he had saved the life of Tuor, whose legacy was far from complete, as his son, Erendil, was but seven years old at the time of the battle. Thus, in the end, Ecthelion's sacrifice proved a key moment in the war against Morgoth, and he remains a powerful yet under-recognized hero in Tolkien's mythology. In that same battle at Gondolin, another elf lord would make his claim as a legendary warrior, the mighty Glorfindel, lord of the House of the Golden Flower. Glorfindel was also born during the Years of the Trees in Valinor, eventually leaving for Middle-earth with his companion Turgon, the founder of Gondolin. He would become a noble leader amongst the Gondolindrim, famous for his golden hair, 
his courage, and his physical prowess. During the fall of Gondolin, Glorfindel and his company fought valiantly against the orcs until a firedrake joined the maelstrom. Having seen the death of Ecthelion in the king's square, he takes up a group of refugees brought forth by another elf lord, Igalmoth, and leads them across the green vale of Tumladin into the mountain pass of Kirith Thoronath. Guarding their rear, he was forced to combat a pursuing Balrog. Glorfindel and the Balrog battled upon the mountain tops. The whips and claws met the Elf Lord's armor as he chased the demon amongst the peaks. Glorfindel landed a strike on the Balrog's iron helm, in addition to severing its whipping arm at the elbow. Writhing in pain, the Balrog charged him and received a blow to the shoulder. They continued to grapple before he drove a blade into the belly of the beast. It was cast down, but as the Balrog fell, it clasped onto the golden hair of Glorfindel and they both fell to their demise. Glorfindel's broken body was rescued by the great eagle Thorondor, and thus a cairn was raised for him. He was covered in grass and golden flowers, and would remain there until Beleriand was sunk into the sea. His sacrifice, too, contributed to saving Tuor and Idril, and so valiant that he was gifted another life in Arda. He dwelt in Valinor for many years after, spending time with the Maya, or Lorin, who would come to be known as Gandalf. After Glorfindel's incarnation, he would be viewed as a near equal to the Maya due to his many gifts in combat and medicine. Balrog suffered much defeat at the hands of the gold and silver elf lords of Gondolin, Glorfindel, and Ecthelion. But some versions of the story, particularly the earliest forms of it, include many more Balrogs existing and being slain by others during the fall of Gondolin. In those tellings, Turgon and his house slaughtered forty Balrogs at King's Square. Tuor himself is responsible for the deaths of five of them with his great axe, Dramborleg, while fighting back to back with Ecthelion, who slew three before he killed Gothmog. Then there is Rog, Lord of the House of the Hammer of Wrath whom, along with his forces, were the first ever to slay any Balrogs outside the walls of the city in the Green Vale of Tumladin, and they slew many. They would all perish in that battle, save Tuor and his family, but their deeds would not be repeated again, save one more altercation thousands of years later. After the War of Wrath to conclude the First Age, the Balrogs would remain out of sight until the Dwarves of Khazad-dûm awakened one, hidden deep in the Mithril Mines. This took place in 1980 of the Third Age, and King Durin VI and his people were slain by that Balrog, giving it the name thereafter of Durin's Bane. Durin's Bane would continue to dwell in the depths of Moria, which then became free to the evil creatures of Middle-earth to inhabit and pass through as they wish. In Third Age 3019, the Fellowship of the Ring made their way through the abandoned kingdom, but were pursued by Durin's bane, who chased them to the bridge of khazad There, Gandalf the Grey stood his ground in hopes of allowing the rest of the group to escape. Gandalf is a Maya, and a long-time servant of the Valar and the children of Iluvatar. His wisdom and pity, some of which he learned under Niena, the Valar of Grief and Mercy, would grant the elves and men much assistance in their struggles against darkness. He was chosen by Manwe, king of the Valar, to aid the peoples of Middle-earth against Sauron as one of the five Istari, a form of missionary. His greatest mission yet was that of the Fellowship of the Ring, seeking to deliver the One Ring to its place of forging at Mount Doom where it could be destroyed once and for all. And so there he stood at the bridge, face to face with the terrible servant of Morgoth, and cast it down into the abyss. However, like previous examples, this Balrog would not descend without taking its assailant with it, wrapping its whip around Gandalf's knees and dragging him down into the deep places of the world. Gandalf pursued Durin's bane for eight days afterward until they came upon the summit of the Endless Stair at Kelebdil, one of the three peaks that topped the mountains of khazad There they fought for three days and two nights in a fury of clouds and smoke and raining ice. The storm of their battle ended with Durin's bane being hurled down the mountainside, breaking it as it tumbled, and leaving the Endless Stair and Durin's tower that topped it in dismay. Gandalf died as well as the Balrog 
and for nineteen days he laid there before he was summoned into depths beyond time and space. Eru Iluvatar had decided to resurrect him so that he may return to complete his mission even more powerful than before as Gandalf the White. The wicked Balrogs of Morgoth put forth great efforts against the heroes of Middle-earth, resulting in many of the most epic battles of single combat in the entire mythology. Thus Ecthelion, Lord of the House of the Fountain, Glorfindel, Lord of the House of the Golden Flower, and Gandalf the Grey, wisest of the Istari, will always be celebrated as the mightiest of figures in the everlasting war on evil that defined Middle-earth for ages.